In this video, we're going to look at writing unit tests for our Python serverless application using the serverless framework. But before that, let's take a look at how the code is laid out. Have a little bit of a recap. So you're looking at the serverless.yaml file, which defines all of our functions. And we have one particular function called getProfile in the profile.yaml file. I've sectioned it out so it's a little bit easier to scale. So we take a look at the profile.yaml. You notice that we've declared the function as get profile and it calls the file main.main. Dot main is the function name. It takes an ID and it's got some path parameters. Here's the actual function itself. That's the main function. It takes an API gateway event and context. And it checks if there is some path parameters. If not, then it turns invalid. It checks the same thing for the user ID. Otherwise, it just echoes back the user ID. Fairly simple. We can also execute it locally uh, using Python modules. But we won't do that here. OK. First thing we're going to do is create a main underscore test.py. And we're going to import unit test. This is from the core Python library. Just import that here from unit test, import test case. And we also want to import the API responses that we saw earlier. I'll just split that across so that we can see what we're doing. So what we really want to test here is the final returns, which is from invalid request response and OK response. Let's have a read of what those actually do. So if you look here, they actually generate a cores header. So this is a RESTful serverless application. The first method is generate empty response. It just returns the cores header and an empty uh, status code. So there's no body. Generate response is the exact same thing, except for it does a JSON.dumps on the body. If you pass one, that is. And OK response is the same thing. So these are all just shorthands with some status codes implemented already. They'll be frequently used, which is why we need to see them here. OK. So we need to actually import the main function, because that's what we're putting under test. If we were doing mocking, I would actually import the main under the test method, but we'll do that later. So we'll create a class here called test get profile, and it inherits test case. That way we have our assertions. First thing we'll test is the invalid request response. We just call that test no path parameters, and this should return an invalid request response. First, we'll need to stub the API gateway event. We'll just keep it empty for now because we're testing for the lack of path parameters. We'll set our expected response to equal invalid response. And then our response for actual, we'll call the profile.main method with the stub and no context. OK. And then we do an assertion. We make sure that what we get from the call is what we expect. 
Otherwise, we'll print out this message. This message only gets displayed when the test fails. So if something breaks in the application, then this will come up in the unit test output. Just make that a little bit prettier to read. Okay, that's our first test. We want to make sure we get all the tests or all the different paths. So let's take a look at what we need to run it. What we'll need to install first is nose tests. And we just do that with pip nth install nose dash dash dev. Pip nth, if you recall, isolates our Python environment. So we don't install all the dependencies in the world. And we just run nose tests. And that will automatically search for any of our tests, unit tests. Cool, so it passed. Let's make it fail on purpose now just to make sure that it's working. I'm going to change the expected just to be a random value. Let's say false. Just directly modify it in here. So the actual should not equal false. And we run it again. There. So the actual got the headers response and 98 more characters. And it's not equal to false. And you can see our message got displayed. Okay, so that seems to be working. We'll just switch it back. We'll do the same thing for the user ID. We want to make our test comprehensive and test every single path. It's similar. This time we'll just rename the test that we're not testing for a, or sorry, that we're testing for a missing user ID. And we'll need to change our stub so that it does include a path parameters object. That way the first test won't fail. However, we will put in a dummy parameter and a dummy value. So we're still expecting an invalid request, but we'll have a different message this time. Just change that. And there's no user ID. Okay. And before we run everything, what we're going to do is test the happy path. So we should be expecting an OK response when everything else passes. And all this does is we just need to change our stub to include the proper values. Just paste that in. I'll just change the param here to ID because that's what it's expecting. Let's put in any ID. And our expected changes to an OK response echoing the user ID. Okay, so we've got every single path covered. Let's do a run. And they all pass. That just about covers it. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like. If you would like to know more about writing serverless applications very quickly in Python, check out the link in the description. It leads to my course on Udemy. Thank you for watching and have a good day.